All right, so you've taken your spectra, you've measured the observed wavelength of the most redshifted component from each spectrum. We have those values. And next you're confronted with a table, a large table in the lab, where you're going to do some calculations. And these calculations are necessary to arrive at the rotation curve and in a later section to arrive at the enclosed mass, the amount of mass within any particular radius from the center of the galaxy. So you can do all these calculations by hand, though it goes a lot more quickly if you use a spreadsheet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so this is a template spreadsheet. We provide a link to it in the lab so you can download this and then start doing calculations. So let's see what we have here first. In the first column, we have the galactic longitude in degrees. And you can see these are the lines of sight that you collected data for all the way out to 88. The next column, we're gonna convert it to radians. And that's because although on a calculator, you can put it in degrees mode when you take, for example, a sine or a cosine or a tangent. In spreadsheets, it assumes that your angles are measured in radians. So we're going to do that conversion. And let me show you how. So you may remember from our previous video on how to use spreadsheets, you begin with an equal sign. Click on the relevant cell, and the conversion from degrees to radians is in 180 degrees, you have pi radians. Pi. Just close out the parenthesis there. So we're taking our angle in degrees, dividing by 180 degrees, multiplying by pi, and it's in radians. And then what you can do is grab that corner and drag it down, and it updates the logic. So in this one, you can see it's using cell A2. In this one, it's using cell A3. This one, it's using cell A4, and so forth. So it, as you drag down, it changes the inputs. Okay, good. This column is where you're going to put your measurements. And I'm just going to quickly make a bunch of stuff up. It's not correct. Well, that's enough to get the idea anyway. So don't trust these values I put in. I just made them up off the top of my head. I want you to actually measure your own values. Okay, in this next column, we're going to calculate the relative speed of the most redshifted region relative to us. And we're, of course, moving, but we'll take care of that in the next column. This is just the relative speed between that cloud of gas and us. And for that, we use the Doppler equation. It's, you experienced it, well, uh, it, it's in the background section of the lab. And I'll just enter it here. So it's equal to your observed wavelength minus the emitted wavelength. I'm going to show you two ways you can do this calculation. So observed wavelength minus the emitted wavelength. So that's the change in wavelength. You divide that by the emitted wavelength. So it's the change in the value divided by the original. And then you just multiply by the speed of light. And you hit enter. And it does the calculation, and it's in kilometers per second because our speed of light is in kilometers per second. However, as I entered this, you can't drag it down because it will, as I drag it down to the next line, C2 will change to C3 like we want, but also the constants will change. This constant will drag down to this line, this constant will drag down to that line, and we don't want that. We want the constants to stay put. So you can do that by putting a dollar sign between the letter and the number, just for the constants. So you say, I hit enter and it didn't change anything, but now I can drag this down and you will drag it all the way down once you have all your measurements in there and it calculates these speeds for you. 
Now, it's very easy to forget to put a dollar sign on the constants, or you may miss a constant, and that will mess it up. So the other way you can do this is instead of clicking on the constants, you type those in manually. So it'd be equal to the observed wavelength minus the emitted wavelength, and we just use this as reference. The emitted wavelength is 21.1061, close parenthesis, divide by the emitted wavelength, so 21.1061, times the speed of light, 300000. Make sure you have the right number of zeros. See, I got the same value. Now when I drag down, I get the same values. It's just a safer way in case you're having problem with the coding of these equations and it prevents a little syntactical error from propagating. Okay, the next column is we're gonna measure our component of our own speed, the sun's speed, because the sun is also going around the center of the galaxy. We've measured the, the relative speed between the cloud of gas and us, but now we need to know our speed in that particular direction. And that's given by our speed going around the galaxy, the sun's speed going around the galaxy, times the sine of the galactic longitude. So our sun speed going around the center of the galaxy is 220 kilometers per second. I'm just going to type in the constants for the rest of this. But again, you can click on them. Just remember to use the dollar sign in that case. Times the sine of the angle. But remember, in Excel, it's expecting the angle to be in radians. So click it in the radians column. Drag down. And you get those components. So the overall speed of the most redshifted region in your spectrum is the sum of these two. It's equal to its speed relative to us plus our speed in that direction. Drag those down. And all these equations are in the background section of the lab. Don't rely just on the video uh, to get them, but go and take a look at them. The radius is equal to our sun's distance from the center of the galaxy, which you measured in lab six. So you see how this keeps bootstrapping upon itself. 8.1 times the sine of the galactic longitude, again measured in radians. And lastly, this is from the final section of the lab. If you know how fast that, that cloud of gas, that most redshifted region in your spectrum is traveling around the center of the galaxy, and you know its distance from the center of the galaxy, you can calculate the enclosed mass and it's equal to the velocity squared, so that you use the caret sign and a two for the squared, times the radius divided by Newton's gravitational constant, which is provided here, and we provide it in the proper units. Velocities in kilometers per second, you can see that in here. The distances in, from the center of the galaxy is in kiloparsecs, you see that here, and it's gonna come out in billions of solar masses. Those are giga solar masses. So you just have to divide by 4302. That's the enclosed mass in giga solar, ma solar masses or billions of solar masses. Again, none of these values are correct because I just made up these numbers. You'll want to enter your own numbers and drag all the way down. And also in that last part of the lab, we give you two more points from outside the visible disk of the galaxy the large and small Magellanic clouds, we give you their velocities and radii, distances from the center of the galaxy, and you can calculate the mass enclosed out to those great distances as well. Okay. Once you calculate your values, you can enter them into, this, into the table in WebAssign. That's it for this lab.